Here's part six of our conversation with Bill Champlin. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. I'm really lucky that, that, you know, you see a lot of musicians I have over the years. You see a lot of musicians that are really full of themselves. And then you see a lot of musicians that are such great people. You know what I mean? Like Richard Page is a really cool pal. He's one of my buddies from years and years ago. And, you know, sometimes you walk into a session and you see somebody like an Elton John date. You know, you're expecting to hear all these rumors that he was real pissy and he was real, you know, kind of kind of a, had a, a bad attitude. I went into the session. He was the sweetest guy in the world. Nicest dude. And uh, and was this a little on, genie? Was this a little genie? Yeah, that was that session. And I did some more stuff with him, and he was a, re- he was a really sweet guy. When he called me, I guess Luke had turned him on to uh, to some of the backgrounds that I'd done, and he went, "I got to get this guy on my record." He called me, and five minutes after I had I was d- doing dishes, and I was about to get on a plane and go up and help a friend produce his demos in San Francisco, and. The, the glass snapped in my hand and I, and I looked, I said, man, that can't be too bad. I'm not bleeding or anything. I looked and I was looking at the bone. The phone rings. It's Elton John. <laughs> I said, Elton, can, can I get your, get your phone number and let me call you back? I just did this. He said, get your ass to the hospital, man. Call me when you can, you know? And then I came back. I said, well, man, he said, can you work for me Monday? I said, I, I told this guy who I was supposed to go to with his, with his hand you know, thing. I told him I was going to, I promised him I'd go up and help him do his demos. Yeah. So I can't work on money. He, says, he said, you mean you're going to produce a demo on a promise to a friend rather than working on an Elton John record? And I said, it's starting to look that way. He said, man, you're great. Well, how about Wednesday? He was, he said, man, that's cool. <laughs> he said, that's really a cool thing. <laughs> I like that. Good guy. You know, really good guy. You can see one of the reasons why he's been as good as he has all along. And I know he got sober at some point. He wasn't one we were working. At some point he got sober and he's got a real good take on the world. Really sweet guy. I like him. Yeah, he's giving a lot back, which is good. But thank you for sharing that. That's one of the most unique stories. I've ever it was heard. weird. You know, so you mean you'd rather do a, you'd rather produce a demo for somebody? And I, and I said, it's kind of working out that way. I wasn't planning on it to be quite that way, but that's sort of how it's working out. And he said, okay, that's, that's cool. I'll see you Wednesday. How about that? So we went over to, I think village somewhere, I can't, village or sunset. One of the, one of the two places. Was it Jeff? What, I think Jeff Picaro was on that. Wasn't Luke on that as well? I forget. I haven't looked at that in a while. So Very what? possible. I know it was right during the time where he was on Geffen records for two albums. Yes. I brought, we brought Tamara in on the next one. And me and Tamara and Stephanie Spruill sang backgrounds on the next one. And when we brought Tam in, Elton was such a gentleman. He's one got her a chair, you know, in the studio instead of just, oh, yeah, it's another studio sausage. You know, he was very, very nice. Just a sweet guy. You know what Nigel was? Nigel was the king of less is more. And he was a great drummer, but he was perfect for Elton John. You know, he had Roger Pope doing all the funny stuff. And I love Roger because I love that kind of drumming more. But yeah. Nigel was the perfect drummer for Elton John. Do you know what's really cool? If you're in this boom, bop, boom, boom, most drummers go up to sixteenths, and Nigel can play that and not rush it or drag it. Play it with even quarters or eighths, and that's I think one of the things that really works well for the singer. I mean, I've always had a thing. It says that the drummer's job is to excite the singer, whose job it is to excite the audience. So there's your direct line, you know, that's how, that's the way it goes, you know.